Hey everybody, welcome to Obscurities in Miniature. Since I have now got the last of my major creature caster models painted, finished, and out of the way, it's time for another, and today we have... DTH. I think that's the Death. Death Elemental? Okay, we'll find out, and I might need to be changing what I say in a sec. Alright. I haven't even opened this yet. That's not good. <laughs> Who knows what's coming up? Alright. Uh, let's see what we've got in store for us. Parts. Okay. Smoke and a lantern. A thing. Coffin like looks like some skulls. I'm hoping this is the death elemental then. Otherwise it's gonna sound super foolish. Yeah, okay, we are. We are not super foolish. We are correct. That was a big scythe. And I don't know. Yes, he does have some options for a big wad of resin that he was cast on. Or something. I don't know. Oh boy. This is gonna be fun. This is going to be one of those models where I really wish I owned an airbrush. But I don't, and I don't intend on buying one anytime soon. So good luck to me, yeah? Okay, I'm not sure what's what. Obviously there's a sword in there that's breaking. It looks like, yeah. And this is the blade, I think. Ah, here we go. Good old death. This model really reminded me of the transformed version of death from Darksiders. And there are not enough Darksider inspired models on the table. Top. There was the one that came with uh, game number three. I think Hector Moran sculpted those. Base, 50 millimeter. Feels 50. Do I have a 50 handy? I do. Nope, 60. Alright, well that makes sense. The big bads usually have 60 millimeter bases. Ooh boy. Here is the portal of lost souls that the death elemental is going to be coming out of right there. Like so. And it's funny, no matter how often I end up building big resin models, I always worry that they're not going to support themselves very well. But I always end up being wrong, so that's always a good thing. I'm not sure what this is. There's a second one, so maybe this must be a shoulder pad of some sort. And then... Oh my goodness. That's not too small, is it? No idea where that's gonna go. I barely remember what this guy is even supposed to look like. It's been so long. He was supposed to come out at Adepticon, and he's been sitting here since. That's kind of sad, High Lord Tamberlane. Or, oh, that looks like a hand. Is it Death's hand? Maybe. Swirly energy soul thing. There's a face there. I think that swirly energy soul thing is supposed to be hanging out with these. Maybe they're swirling around that portal. I have no idea. That's a, a lot of parts. So, I'm going to grab all these and hopefully figure out just what in the world I'm going to do with this. Sit tight and I'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Alright, we got our Death Elemental all finished and... I gotta say, once again, I've said this, it seems, with many of the Creature Caster kits, despite how crazy that part layout looked, it all went together pretty quickly and pretty easily. Um, most of the pieces that make up all of the flying spirits have very specifically keyed parts, so it's really, really difficult to mix them up, and they all kind of connect together to keep him nice and solid there. I didn't actually glue on his arm with the scythe yet. 
just because I wanted to be able to get in there and actually paint it nicer and slop on all the paint. I have a feeling I'm going to be really quick with this guy getting him painted. Uh, I like the design work, especially it's almost mechanical looking on his arm there. Uh, one of the little parts that I couldn't figure out was actually the joint on the back of his elbow right there. So that actually slides on. That's only for the scythe hand. You can see there's like little wires and stuff running around. I'm not sure what's up with that. It's kind of interesting though. And it's got like what looks almost like a utility belt on. So I might paint him up similarly to my OCR Bone Reapers. Um, at first I was thinking he might make a cool endless spell type thing. Uh, he's too small for a Nagash stand-in. Let's, let's be clear right there. If you thought about using this, uh, I mean, honestly, my first thought though was as a substitute for Lady Linder. Um, I can't stand the model. It looks neat painted one, built one, and every time I looked at it, I was just crossing my fingers that it didn't fall and break. It just was an absolute, it's too thinly attached. And surprisingly, this guy looks really delicate, but he's pretty solidly on there. Uh, I really just wish that maybe the whole portal and elemental coming out of that portal was a little bit more centered. It looks kind of like it's a bit back, but I mean, it... It hasn't tipped over yet. I'm absolutely shocked. I might put a little bit of a weight on the bottom of the base just to kind of help counterbalance that. Not that it really needs it, but I'm paranoid and crazy. So, what can you do? Uh, real quick, we'll look at the other optional arms. So, there's a difference between this arm, which is aiming down. That's only for the scythe. I tried playing around with both. And then there's an upraised one. And then that piece, you actually have a choice of either the scepter see it just locks in like that and again you can see right here there's that little weird piston thingy this was a separate piece it's on the sprue that had the tongue on it and then we have this sword i'm really not sure what's going on with the sword it's like shattered almost i, I don't know maybe it's like the chrysage room from symphony of the night and it's splitting into a million different pieces to butcher its opponents beats me uh but you know we're going with the death elemental i really feel like it's got to have the scythe now ideally what they should have done is put the sword or something else in that opposite hand but <sighs> that's not to complain right so let's take a look at what this elemental actually is like size wise so we will grab our usual stand-in figures a mantic human a frostgrave human and our ever-present witch hunter friend here and you can see he's pretty tall uh he's not ridiculously tall like some of the other creature caster kits um i don't have any of the big ones handy i did grab a couple of the smaller ones he is on a 60 millimeter base keep in mind he's not one of the larger ones so here is the orc was it forge lord or forge master we'll get some of the smaller demons there as well um like i said i'm thinking of using them as lady Linder's stand-in so grabbing another mortark so i do actually have quite a bit of painted undead i think size wise you can see pretty nice reasonable size and even with the craven king i think he fits in pretty well Again, I'm leaning more towards going with OCR Bone Reaper colors, but I'm thinking I'm going to cheat and grab a bunch of the technical paints and just go and just splatter it all over that portal thing and call it a day with that and then go in and paint the actual torso. I do have my Lord of Slaughter hanging around here. So just to give you guys a good size indicator, um, I mean, really, I'm, I'm impressed. <laughs> I say that about all their kits. Uh, I just, I was really, really hesitant with all that craziness going on there. Yep, I mean, it's got a little bit of wobble, but it's all pretty solid. There's at least six or seven contact points where it all actually attaches to the base. So very cool. And I know I've complained quite loudly and repetitively about some of the earlier models that had very little contact points with their base and they were like crazy huge. Um, what's it? The Queen of Ecstasy is one that really bugged me. Uh, but no, this this is really solid, I guess. Again, my only real complaint would be nothing in the alternative hand. I'm not a big fan of the tongue sticking out. I mean, you can leave it if you choose. Uh, 
and I just wish that everything was a little bit more centered just for my almost borderline OCD. It just is like so slightly off. On the other hand, I really would like to see more models like this torso part of the elemental actually done up, you know, in more humanoid form. Uh, when they had the art, it really gave me a Darkstalkers vibe. And I loved the design work of Darkstalkers. I've got the books if you guys ever want me to show them off on here. We can do that on a Friday one day. Uh, absolutely love the design work that went into Darksiders. And barely, barely anybody has ever really gone with that super over-exaggerated look on the tabletop. But I think Creature Caster is like right on the cusp of kind of doing that. If they really went all the way. Again, leg models like the Lord of Slaughter here. Looks like he almost could fit into it like a Darksiders type tabletop game. But, you know, that's just me and my weird preferences. So, who am I to talk, right? But yeah, I, I really would like to see them further embellish these designs and see more like that. Of course, I'd also like to see more like their work as well. But anyway, I'm rambling at this point. I'm actually going to go out and spray him right now. It's a nice day outside. It's not super hot. And I am going to get started on painting this. We'll put a link down below if you are curious about picking one of these up yourself. And I believe that as I am posting this, the new Queen of Slaughter should be available as well from Creature Caster. So do take a look at that if you are curious. With that said, this has been High Lord Tamberlane with Obscurities and Miniatures. Saying thanks for watching, and we'll see you back here soon. Bye bye.